Okay. Um, hi, everyone. My name is John Daly. I'm a third year PhD student studying at NUI Galway in Ireland. Uh, I'm studying under the supervision of Professor Michael O'Dwyer. And my talk today is about hyperstyle relation protecting myeloma cells from NK cell mediated immune surveillance and how this can be overcome by targeted destyleation or genetic modification of NK cells. So, just a quick introduction uh, for anyone who mightn't be aware multiple myeloma is an incurable malignancy affecting our plasma cells and tumors form uh, in the bone marrow. Often several of these tumors will form, uh, leading to the term multiple in multiple myeloma. And aberrant glycosylation is a hallmark of cancer, and this is particularly true in the case of multiple myeloma, where proteins and glycans on the cell surface are terminated with sialic acids. This is due to the action of a family of human cell transferases, of which there are 20 members. Uh, a dense layer of sialic acids forms on the myeloma cancer cells, and this leads to them being termed hypersialylated. Uh, sialotransferase activity is often dysregulated in cancer, and our group have previously implicated several sialotransferases, including ST3-GAL6, in myeloma disease progression and survival. So as well as facilitating abnormal cell trafficking and drug resistance, hypersialylation may also uh, cause evasion of NK cell-mediated immune surveillance thus leading to potentially an avoidance of killing by NK cells. So natural killer cells, or NK cells, are cytotoxic lymphocytes with an innate ability to recognize and destroy transformed cells. They do this by employing a wide range of both activating and inhibitory receptors on their cell surface. Um, binding of these receptors to their concomitant ligands results in the generation of an overall net kill or release signal determining the target cell's fate. Classic uh, pathways such as MHC class 1 binding to inhibitory cure receptors are well understood. However, the potential for sialylated lichens to act as self-associated molecular patterns is less well recognized. Recently, attention has turned towards the role of uh, sialic acids in binding to sialic acid binding immunoglobulin like lectins or SIGLEX. These are a family of receptors containing both activating and inhibitory members. However, only two inhibitory members are expressed by NK cells, SIGLEC7 and SIGLEC9. SIGLEC7 is expressed by nearly all NK cells, whereas SIGLEC9 is expressed by a subset of CD56 DIM NK cells. So similarly to the checkpoint inhibitor PD1, SIGLEC receptors act by recruiting intracellular phosphatases via their intracellular ITIM motif upon binding to their ligands. These phosphatases, SHP1 and SHP2, once activated, then inhibit activation pathways within the NK cell, thus leading to, leading to a dampening of their, activa of their activation and cytotoxicity. This results in the target cell being uh, released and allowed to continue throughout the circulation instead of being destroyed. So based on this background, we came up with a number of important research questions for our project. We uh, wanted to know whether hypersalylation of the myeloma cell surface does mediate immune evasion of NK cells. We wanted to know if, if this was the case, whether this was due to SIGLEC, SIGLEC ligand interactions. And finally, we wanted to know whether we could combine desalylation strategies with existing therapies to further enhance NK cell cytotoxicity against myeloma. In order to answer our first question, we decided to desialylate uh, the myeloma cell surface using both a sialidase enzyme and a specific sialotransferase inhibitor, and then co-culture these myeloma cells with primary NK cells and cytotoxicity assays in order to measure myeloma cell death. We desialylated myeloma cell lines JGN3 and H99 using the sialidase, and we co-cultured them with uh, three types of primary NK cells, so naive NK cells, IL-2 activated NK cells, and expanded NK cells. We observed that at all ET ratios for all of the primary NK cell types that we tested, there was a strong increase in killing of the desialylated myeloma cells versus the sialylated control. This was the case for naive NK cells, IL-2 activated NK cells, and also expanded NK cells. The NK cell expansion protocol that we used for this project was from Milton Biotech, and all the data that we show from here on will be gathered using expanded NK cells. So finally, we desalylated the uh, myeloma cell line MM1S with the cell transferase inhibitor 3-fax per set in U5AC. So the myeloma cells were cultured with this inhibitor for 72 hours prior to the cytox assay. And again, similar to the neuraminidase data, what we observed was a strong increase in killing of the desalylated myeloma cells versus the DMSO treated control. So we understand that myeloma 
um, the hypersalivated myeloma cell surface does indeed mediate immunization of NK cells. But we then wanted to know whether this was in a SIGLEC dependent manner or not. So we decided to uh, see if we could establish whether these interactions were possible in multiple myeloma. So we screened the M1S, H929, and JGN3 myeloma cells for SIGLEC, ligand, SIGLEC7 and SIGLEC9 ligand expression using recombinant chimeras. We saw strong increases, or we saw strong expression of both ligands, as you can see in A. And when we used patient samples, so myeloma cells isolated from bone marrow aspirates of, of victim patients, we also saw expression of the ligands here. Finally, we, um, we measured the expression of SIGLEC7 and SIGLEC9 on NK cell lines and primary NK cells also. And we saw that SIGLEC7 was strongly expressed in IL2 activated and expanded NK cells where SIGLEC9 was expressed only by a subset of uh, IL-2 activated NK cells, and they weren't ex expressed by expanded NK cells. So we decided to target the NK cells for SIGLEC7 using CRISPR, as this was one of the most uh, relevant uh, avenues for, for investigation. Here you can see that we, when we used a single guide, um, we obtained uh, a 50% approximate level of knockout. So in A in the histogram, you can see one of the donors that we used a representative of, of the NS7 in total. And you can see in red, the clear negative population forming on the CRISPR cells versus the mock electric created cells, which remain highly positive in blue. This is the case for all of the donors that we tested, the seven donors in total, where we saw an approximate 50% knockout, as you can see in B. However, when we cultured these knockout cells, versus the MOC cells against myeloma cell lines, H929 and JGN3, which do express SIGLEC7 ligands, we didn't observe any increases in killing. And this was a little bit um, curious, but we also suspected that possibly 50% knockout was not a high enough level of knockout to see a functional change in the NK cells. So we therefore decided to try and achieve a higher level of knockout. So we went back and we used three guides from a CRISPR optimization knockout kit from Syntego. And we achieved an almost 90% knockout with excellent viability of the NK cells. Here uh, in our first donor that we, we tested, we saw really strong increases in killing of the, CRISP, uh, of the myeloma cells by the CRISPR NK cells versus the mock uh, NK cells. And this was the same or similar for all of the donors that we tested. There was a lot of variance between donors, but eventually from NS7, we ended up seeing uh, statistically significant increases in killing of the myeloma cells by the CRISPR cells versus the MOC. So this answered the question about whether SIGLEX were involved in regulating NK cell activity against myeloma. And it appears that at least in part, SIGLEX7 is responsible for this. And finally, we wanted to combine desilylation strategies with existing therapies to further enhance NK cell cytotoxicity against myeloma. And one of the key mechanisms of action of NK cells is ABCC. This is mediated through their CD16 receptor, which binds to the FC chain of antibodies, thus delivering a strong activating signal to the NK cell. In myeloma, one of the most common monoclonal antibodies used uh, for cellular therapy is daratumumab, which binds to the CD38 antigen, which is also slightly expressed on NK cells, but is heavily predominant on all myeloma cells. So we screened um, myeloma cell lines M1S and H929 for a panel of relevant target antigens uh, before and after desilylation to see if sialic acids were masking the expression of some of these antigens. And we observed a near complete removal of sialic acids upon sial transferase inhibitor treatment. And to our surprise, we observed a consistent and reproducible increase in CD38 expression in desilylated cells versus desilylated control, whereas we didn't see any increase for any of the other markers that we used, for, for example, BCMA, MOC1, or SLANOT7. So to investigate this further, we desilylated myeloma cell lines M1S, H929, and JGN3 using both the silylidase and the silyltransferase inhibitor. And for M1S and H929, we saw strong increases in the MFI of CD38 on CD38 positive cells, whereas we did not see any increases in the JGN3. Using mononuclear cells isolated from bone marrow aspirates from NS6 patients, we treated the mononuclear cells for 40 hours with the cell transferase inhibitor as well, 
and we observed an increase in the CD38 expression, as you can see, using uh, a histogram representative of one of the patients. So therefore, we decided to investigate whether this effect was worth combining with uh, daratumumab, the, the monoclonal antibody which binds to CD38. So we chose the H99 cell line where we had seen a strong increase in CD38 expression upon desalylation, and we combined desalylation with daratumumab treatment. And what we observed uh, was that at both ET ratios that we used, NK cells were more readily able to lice and target uh, the H99 cells when they had been pre-treated with both the sal transferase inhibitor and daratumumab compared to sal transferase inhibitor or daratumumab treatment alone. As NK cells do express some CD38 themselves, there is always the possibility of fratricide. Uh, NK cells could recognize a daratumumab bound other NK cells and, and destroy themselves. So what we wanted to do next was to target CD38 using CRISPR as well. So similarly to the SIGLEC7, we obtained a high level of knockout and exome cell viability. And we observed that these CD38 knockout NK cells retain their potency in this assay format against the H99 cells. Finally, we wanted to address uh, the JGN3 cell line where we had not seen an increase in CD38 expression upon desalylation. What we decided to do here was to treat the JGN3 with ATRA uh, which upregulates CD38 expression as well as sal transferase inhibitor. What we saw was that there was a strong increase in CD38 expression on ATRA treated JGN3 cells, but there was an even stronger expression on ATRA and sal transferase inhibitor treated JGN3 cells. So we repeated the same cytox assay that we had done on the previous slide, and we combined this treatment strategy with daratumumab treatment. And again, what we saw was that. Um, JGN3, which had been treated with atra sal transferase inhibitor and daratumumab, were much more readily targeted by the NK cells than so JGN3 cells, which had been treated with atra and dara or sia and dara alone. So to conclude, um, we understand that hypersalylation protects myeloma cells from NK cell mediated immune surveillance, um, and this appears or is at least in part due to SIGLEC7. Um, we also discovered the desalylation of myeloma cells or targeted knockout of SIGLEC7 in primary NK cells using CRISPR strongly enhances the NK cell killing against SIGLEC7 ligand expressing myeloma cell lines. It also, we showed that hypersalylation of the myeloma cell surface does mask the CD38 antigen and desalylation combined with daratumumab enhances NK cell mediated ADCC of myeloma cell lines which is further enhanced in after treated myeloma cells with enhanced CD38 expression. So just thank you everyone. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone involved in this project, particularly my supervisors, Professor Michael McGuire and, and Dr. Matthias Cowston, as well as my funders, uh, the Irish Cancer Society and everyone in the Azwire and Cowston Labs. Uh, thank you for listening to my talk and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have.